In 2022, fintech has become more or less a mainstay in the financial services industry. The 2021 Global Findex report that came out revealed that even in developing countries, 71% of adults now either have a bank account or mobile money account. That's up 50% from a decade ago. And that number goes up 76% if you add in the developed countries as well. And that means that the global market for financial services is prime and on the rise. However, you cannot achieve this global scale of service without the aid of technology, and that's where FinTech comes in. Financial technology drives adoption by moving from the brick and mortar branches to putting financial services online and on mobile. FinTech drives financial inclusion, brings more people into the global economy, and revolutionizes the way that business is conducted, and that is why we see users continue to express their present need for newer FinTech products. In 2021, Fintech investments surged 68% to $210 billion globally, which is evidence of investor confidence in the future of the fintech industry. Now is as good a time as ever to jump in on the fintech game. So in this video, I'm going to share with you how to build a fintech app, highlighting the most important steps to take, points to consider when choosing vendors, designing the user interface, and launching your fintech app. Now, if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then let's chat about it. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jeremy, and if you're new here and haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so because on this channel, I speak about FinTech, digital transformation, personal, and career development. Now saying you want to build a FinTech app is like saying you're creating a marketing software. It's too generic and vague, and you need to be more specific about what kind of FinTech app you want to build. FinTech has evolved into an umbrella field with lots of subdomains and niches. So in the same way, there are different types of FinTech apps that cater to a specific category. So the first thing to do is to identify the specific type of FinTech app you want to build before moving on to anything else. This is because depending on your target customer segment, an app may not even be the ideal solution. In Africa, for example, mobile money is run primarily via the USSD channel hosted by mobile network operators, and they are now only evolving into the app space. So let's go through a few of the most common fintech app categories to give you an understanding first. The first category are payment and money transfer apps. Now mobile payment platforms allow consumers to pay for goods and services in a fast and secure way. Additionally, they allow businesses to accept and transfer payments directly into their bank accounts without compromising security. Users can accept and send money from other bank accounts or wallets and perform banking activities using these apps. Some of the most well-known payment processing fintech apps are PayPal, Alipay, Square, Stripe, Venmo, and in Africa, we have Paystack. Next are mobile banking apps. Mobile banking apps allow users to manage their accounts and access financial services without having to go to a physical bank branch. They're usually a combination of mobile and online banking services that allow customers to open accounts, check balances, transfer funds, make payments, and sometimes even take out a loan. Their main advantage is in providing the user better transparency and 24 seven access to their money. Most banks today have mobile banking apps like the Chase app or even the Fidelity app, and even the new banks like Revolut or Chime are popular examples of mobile banking apps. Next are lending apps. Now, loan apps facilitate the lending process by connecting the borrower to the lender directly. The platform manages the loan application process, the credit scoring, and loan payments. The innovative thing about the lending app is that they aren't limited to just banks or credit agencies. Some apps support peer-to-peer -peer lending, which enables individuals to lend money directly to a borrower at an interest rate. Common examples of lending apps would be SoFi, Branch, Tala, and Lending Club. Next are investment and trading apps. Now, investment applications are digital platforms that democratize investing by making it accessible to everyone, not just the wealthy. These apps offer search and comparison of assets for investing, real-time notifications, and much more. It eliminates intermediaries, it lowers commissions, and makes it easier to place trades with just a few taps. Robo-advisors take this a step further by providing an automated broker to manage your portfolio and make trades on your behalf by leveraging AI and machine learning algorithms to assess your financial standing and risk profile to suggest possible trades or investing options. Examples of these would be Wealthfront, Vanguard, and Betterment. 
Next, we have insurance or insurtech apps. Now, these apps serve as a bridge between the insurance organizations and consumers. The app enhances the insurance and claims experience by providing more accurate ways to assess risk. Insurance apps can vary from simple tools for tracking insurance payments to AI-based systems that evaluate users with machine learning models and personalized insurance plans. It also uses IoT devices, smart wearables, vehicle telematics, drones infused with AI to better gauge a person's lifestyle and risk profile. Examples of these would be Timbrella, Clover, Lemonade, and Simple Assurance. Next, we have personal finance management apps. Now, this category of fintech apps help people better manage their money. These apps essentially act as automated financial advisors. The apps are able to centralize all your financial information in one location to make it simpler to manage your finances and track your spending habits. These apps are able to reveal trends and opportunities to help you save towards a goal and make sound financial decisions without any human assistance. Mint is one of the most popular apps as well as Spendy in that space. All right. Now that we've spoken about some of the fintech app categories so you know which area to niche down to, we can talk about the steps to take to actually build out your app. The first step is to do your research. It's important to conduct extensive research on your niche segment and target market. You should know what the challenges that segment is facing that your fintech app will look to solve or improve. It may be an existing process that is inefficient or simply not user friendly. You need to extensively gather information about your ideal customer the competitor apps or platforms within the space and the opportunity that lies therein and what value you can add and potentially gain. It may take the help of a business analyst to probe the market for vacant niches and opportunities that others may have overlooked. Once you have the general idea, then you're good to go. Next is to form a team. You need to get a team of professionals together to start building out your fintech app. You can either form an in-house team or outsource by partnering with an external vendor. You just have to make sure that the intended purpose and the app building process is clearly communicated and understood by each team member or the vendor. It's advisable to partner with a trusted fintech software development company if you choose to outsource because then they can provide guidance and they have the necessary experience to suggest open source components to get you started in the most practical and cost effective manner. If you decided to go with an in-house team, then you should ensure that you have experts in user interface design, web development, development, Android and iOS development, software testing, and DevOps engineering. Building a fintech app can be a complex task because the financial services industry is heavily regulated. So once you have a team of experts, you should organize them in a manner to enhance their productivity and collaboration. You can leverage agile methodologies like Scrum and project management tools such as Trello to improve the productivity of the agile team. Next is to define your minimum viable product or MVP. You need to systematically define all the features that need to be included in the app, including key values and user stories that will form the basic functional scope of the first release. You can do these by following some simple steps. One would be to define the market as part of the market research we discussed earlier regarding your product's field. Next is to have sessions with your development team to clarify which features are a must have in your app. And then finally, you need to prioritize which features are most critical and add the most value for a first release and you can use prioritization tools like a prioritization matrix to assist with this. You need to keep it lean and don't let scope creep kick in and create unnecessary delays. Later on, you will be able to expand the functionality of the app based on customer surveys, more testing and your evolving vision for the product. Next is to select your technology stack. For the non-techies like myself, a technology stack sometimes called a solution stack or technology infrastructure or data ecosystem is very simply a list of all the technology services used to build and run one application. For example, Facebook, now Meta, is composed of a combination of coding frameworks and languages including JavaScript, HTML, CSS, PHP, and React.js. This would be Meta's tech stack. For a fintech, your tech stack would need to include cloud storage services like Google Cloud or AWS, DevOps solutions like Docker, GitHub, or Visual Studio, frameworks like PowerShell, Node.js, or Backbone.js, programming languages like Python, JavaScript, Java, PHP, Kotlin. You could add in extras like Nginx or Braintree. Next is to design APIs for the core functionalities. For a fintech app, you will have core functions like payments, budgeting, tracking bills and accounts. And if you don't already have these capabilities, you will have to build 
load them into your application. APIs or the application programming interface are a set of definitions and protocols to build and integrate application software. The simplest example is to think of APIs as a waiter in a restaurant that takes your order to the kitchen and delivers your food back to you when it's ready. So the APIs enable you to integrate with third-party applications and enable developers to build new interactions between the various applications for people and business use on a daily basis. A well-built and designed API integration will facilitate facilitate streamlined and consistent access to the back end from the front end. A RESTful API, for example, will utilize the management cloud services we discussed earlier to host the API back end. You should develop, test, and document the API using effective tool and manage development, staging, and production environments for the APIs. Use robust database solutions and design URL paths effectively. And finally, you should secure your API with authentication and data encryption. Next is to design Design the user interface and user experience. Fintech applications are meant to be user friendly. The customer knows nothing about the coding and APIs or tech stack. What the customer values is simplicity, transparency, ease of use, and great aesthetic design. A good UI or UX is one of the most important things to focus on when building a fintech app, probably second only to security. This is where your creativity should come out. User interface design development is about improving the user's interaction with the app, making it as easy to use and as effective as possible. So this focuses a lot more on aesthetics like menus, icons, buttons, pages, and all other forms of visual elements that contribute to the user interface of the app. A user experience design is more about the process of making the app more engaging, interactive, and useful. So simply put, UX doesn't focus on the visuals, rather it aims to improve the overall feel of the experience by developing and improving the quality of the experience that users get when they visit the app. In the UX UI design phase, the developers create a wireframe layout of the future product which is essentially a basic layout of all the screens needed to understand the app logic and the workflow. Next is to test the app ahead of the launch. Before the official launch, it's important to launch a beta version. This is an experimental version that is released ahead of the actual launch to uncover as many bugs or usability issues as possible in a controlled setting. You can make it accessible to a limited group of people like local customers, friends, or people at your workplace. The feedback will help you improve a lot of irregularities. In this in this phase, you should also pay attention to data protection measures ahead of the official launch. Once the feedback from the beta testing is received and the necessary updates and improvements are made by the developers, you can now present your app to your general target audience. Now, once your fintech app is live, you need to take the additional step to keep your application updated on a regular basis. There is always something new happening in the technology world. Customers' needs are always changing and there are continuous advances advancements in technology. It's imperative that you constantly look to keep your app up to date with the latest upgrades and features that keep your fintech app relevant and competitive within the market. Now, it's important to highlight that there are several challenges associated with building a fintech app and it's not always going to be smooth sailing. As we hinted at earlier, financial services are heavily regulated. Fintechs are required to comply with rules and standards of the countries in which they operate. There are a lot of legal and regulatory considerations to make regarding data sharing and ownership, fraud prevention, and ensuring that there isn't undue bias in implementing AI and ML algorithm-based solutions. Security should be one of your highest priorities because it can also be the source of the biggest issues on your app. So friends, those are the steps and considerations to take and make in building your fintech app. The fintech sector remains at the forefront of the financial services industry, and now is a great time to get on board. I hope you found this video valuable and if you did remember to hit the like button and drop me a comment also if there's anything you would like to know about that i left out do let me know in the comment section as always you can grab your african themed prints using the link below from where ghana and i'll see you in the next video cheers guys